quick making decision. That one. Ah, crack it. Quack. Hang on for the loud quack. Four, three, two, one. Ricky. I'm Jamie, and we are cleaning out the Loop Show game cabinet. We have so many games we haven't even played in here. Yeah, Ricky, do uh, time games stress you out? Like when you have to make quick decisions? Oh, sometimes yes, but it's also sometimes fun whenever it's part of the game. But in real life, no, that super stresses me out. I agree, I feel the exact same way. Yeah, it can be easy to make wise choices whenever you feel like you have all the time in the world. But what about when the pressure gets cranked up? Oh yeah, it can be really difficult whenever you feel like you have to make a wise choice in a short amount of time oh. and make a quick reaction. Oh. What advice would you give someone who wants more self-control? Make it easier to do the things that you want to do and harder to do the things that you don't want to do. Start out small and start out by controlling things that you know you can do and then growing up to bigger things and bigger goals that you want to have self-control. I'd give them advice in practicing how to express their feelings and emotions. I would say just imagine how your choices are going to impact your life in the future and then make your choices based on what's best for your future. And now, the same answer, but in a made-up gibberish language. Oh. In every waking hour of our lives, we are faced with decisions. The moment of decision is the span taken while we are making up our mind. During that period, we weigh the factors involved. Sometimes it takes only a second, sometimes hours, days, or even weeks. But that decision is always our own. And if it is an important one, it may affect our whole future, even our life. For Robert, John, Paul, and Bill, the moment of decision is not far off. Temptation is waiting in the form of a sleek bronze convertible. It's already caught your attention, hasn't it, boys? The desire to be mobile, to move swiftly, is part of being young. Speed is a dimension best understood by youth. Up to now, the desire is only a projection of your imagination. But in a moment, Paul will notice something that will change all that. Now the opportunity is there. All you have to do is climb in and drive off. Now you're each faced with a decision, one that could change your life. All right, you're probably not gonna steal a car, right? Good. Okay, so let's put ourselves in a different scenario. Like, let's say we go get ice cream with our friends and all of a sudden there's a huge line and there are like 50 flavors to choose from. But it's okay because I know my favorite flavor is chocolate chip cookie dough, so I'm not gonna panic. So I get up to the counter and they say, oh, sorry, Christina, we're all out of chocolate chip cookie dough. So then I panic and I end up ordering something that I really don't even like in the first place, but I end up getting Rocky Road. I didn't think through my decision at all. And now I'm stuck with something I did not want. What controls your choices whenever things feel out of control? Is it logic? Is it just doing what feels right? Making wise choices whenever you're tempted is really hard, but there's good news. Wisdom. Wisdom is that thing that keeps us in line with what God wants. The Bible says in the book of James that our God freely gives wisdom whenever we ask for it. So how do we stay wise? One way is by strengthening our self-control. Self-control is keeping ourselves in check. It's having control over our emotions and our actions and not throwing a fit whenever we have to wait. Have you ever had to choose something that you knew was right but you really didn't want to? Congrats, you just showed self-control or restraint. You're not mastered by your behavior. You're the master of your behavior. You don't just choose what's easy or what feels good. You choose what is wise. Hey, what's this game? A 10 second sandwich. Did someone say sandwich? Ooh, I love this game. Let's play it. Uh, were you just like waiting back there? 
Yeah, I was. It was really tough on my knees. Let's play this game. Uh, playing games with you tends to be rough. Oh, don't you worry your little hat-covered head. This game is easy to learn, it's fun to play, and at the end, you get a sandwich. A tasty sandwich? We'll see. Come on, let's play 10 Second Sandwich. Come on, it's not working. Hey, here's how we play. We'll take turns. I'll give you a category. Mm -hmm. You have 10 seconds to name four things in that category. So if okay. I said, name four things that burn, you would say? Candles, wood, leaves, calories. As soon as you've named all four, you'll throw this napkin off. Yep, throw Ooh. that off. So we've got mustard and we've got jelly. Yep. If you do all of that within 10 seconds, mm -hmm. name four things and choose an ingredient, then you get to put that on your sandwich. Okay. If you fail to do that within 10 seconds, I get to choose what goes on the sandwich. Oh, no. All right, we got our first ingredient. Okay. You ready to play, Ricky? Ready. All right, here we go. Name four farm animals. Pig, rooster, cow, and chicken. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yay, good okay. job. Nice, All right, Great let's choice. get ingredient two. Name four cities. Uh, Dallas, Austin, Oklahoma City, Boise. Oh, uh, oh, definitely this, Parmesan. Okay, Parmesan is the cheese. Also had some nice blue cheese. Mm -hmm. What you guys want? Oh, I can't even watch them. Why no, is no, it no. blue, though? Why is it Because it's mold. moldy. That's we... right. Yeah, I know. I've got another ingredient in here. This is the third ingredient and the last one of this round. Okay. Ricky, are you ready? Ready. Name four types of weather. Uh, sunny, full, cloudy, and rainy. Pepperoni. Now, Ricky, <laughs> fall. <laughs> As Fall a type of weather? It's a type of weather. And not a season? Fall weather, sweater weather. That means we're gonna put just a little bit of tuna in that sandwich, just a morsel. Oh. Hey guys, I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Name four things that rhyme with whiz fling. It's time for the quiz thing. Hey, has anybody seen the remote for the quiz void? Who had the clicker last? Has anybody seen the zapper? <laughs> here it is, found it. All right, here we go. Seen it, read the book. No, I don't like that. There's nothing on. Thanks to that little device, I can control something from far away, from a remote distance. TV, on. Air conditioner, colder. Garage door, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, until the chain breaks. Which of these is the name of the first remote designed to control a TV? Is it A, control o -matic, B, lazy bones, C, the zenith, or D, telemoto? Which one is it? Is it telemoto? If you said B, they should call you smarty bones, because you're right. Lazy bones was developed in 1950 and was actually wired to the TV. So it never got lost, but it was a lot more likely to clothesline your dog. The first wireless remote showed up in 1955 and was called the Flashmatic. You didn't need a lot of buttons on your remote back in those days because there wasn't a lot your TV could do. There were like three channels and most of it was westerns and quiz shows. I like that, no complaints here. Keep the quiz shows coming. And which of these was not a button on those early remote controls? Was it A, antenna, B, mute, C, channel up, or D, green hue? Was it green hue? Which one was it? Yell it out, come on, give me some answers. What's it, what's it gonna be? If you said A, you're right. If you wanted to adjust the antenna, you didn't push a button on the remote control, you told your kids to do it. That's right, Brian. Climb up on the roof there and adjust that little coat hanger thingy. Quick, there's rain clouds. By the early 2000s, people had so many electronic devices in their homes and they each had their own remotes. So many remotes, there's gotta be a better way. Universal remotes became all the rage. One remote to rule them all. Now, imagine that there was a remote that was just for you. For example, uh, this remote would help you regulate your volume, or help you power down, or maybe it could uh, help you rewind your thoughts and learn from what you said. <laughs> and learn from what you said. If there was a universal device to help me control myself, I would want it. Is it wise to make choices when you're feeling out of control? Rarely, I mean, sometimes, but not much. It helps to know who you are and have some boundaries in place. That's why I'm thankful for what it says in James 1.5. It says, if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. And this is what I always thought. I always thought, okay, cool. 
I'll ask God for wisdom, and then I'll try really hard to just be controlled. I'll control myself. And then I would mess up, and I would think that my remote was broken. Because me trying to control things on my own is called willpower. Willpower works for a while, and then it burns out because my strength is a limited resource. God didn't expect me to be wise all on my own. That's why he gave you and me the Holy Spirit to energize our self-control. Again, my control, your control, only willpower. The Holy Spirit's control is God's power. It doesn't burn out because God's strength is unlimited. My strength is limited. His strength is not. I like this Andy Minio quote that says, here is the paradox of Christian living. And paradox is just another word for a statement that seems absurd or contradictory. I'm, I'm sure you know this. So he says, here's something absurd about following Jesus. We must give up control of self to gain self-control. Give up control of self to gain self-control. It seems really weird. Basically what that's saying is, what if instead of holding tightly to your remote, you toss it to the Holy Spirit? What if you were to ask the Holy Spirit to transform your thoughts and actions and emotions? It's not gonna happen overnight. I can tell you, as an adult, I still have to do this daily. But over time, when I do this, the Holy Spirit has guided me to better choices, changed my heart to a better channel, and made my actions look more like Jesus. And that's what I want, not my control, his control. Not my strength, his strength. So if you want stronger self-control, you've gotta give up that remote. You've gotta let our creator be your guide. I'm the quiz man, goodbye. So far on our sandwich, we have croissant, Parmesan cheese, and pepperoni with just a little bit of tuna. What's this fourth ingredient gonna be? Who oh. knows? All right, are you ready, Jamie? Yeah. We're gonna start with you. Name four people you might find in a school. A teacher, principal, student, a janitor. Oh, and uh, cucumbers. Oh, okay. They're not pickled, oh. but they're pre-pickles. All right, Ricky, you ready? Name four Loop Show characters. Uh, Jump Scare Jimmy, a Juno Bob, Ricky and Jamie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ketchup. Ketchup, all right. We also had whatever this is. Yeah, it's Italian dressing. For ingredient six, we've got our sauces and most of our sandwich bill, but we do need a wild card ingredient. So you've got 10 seconds, Jamie, to name four Pixar movies. Inside Out. Um, Jamie. Uh, up. Yes, come on, Jamie. You can even do sequels, come on. Uh, up to. <laughs> Up to what? Up to what? Up to what? Oh. You didn't say Toy Story, Toy Story 2, oh. Toy Story 3, oh. and Toy, Toy Story 4. Uh, Let's that... see what's on our wild card. Oh, great. Oh, boy, I get to make a choice between oh. Fruit Loops and Slim Jims. Fruit Loops, I think, goes really well with that, so I think we'll put that on the sandwich as well. And that's how you play 10 Second Sandwich. So we don't have to actually eat the sandwich that we made? Oh, you're gonna be eating that sandwich right after this. Our generous God for it He will give it to you He will not rebuke you for asking If you need wisdom Ask our generous God for it He will give it to you He will not rebuke you for asking God guide what I should know Jesus guide where you will go Spirit guide my self-control Give me wisdom When I don't know where to go Give me direction I know I don't know everything Give me correction When I don't know where to go Give me direction I know I don't know everything Give me correction God got what I should know Jesus got where you will go Give it, guide my self-control Give me wisdom God, God, what I should know Jesus, guide where you will go Spirit, guide my self-control Give me wisdom
Ask our generous God for it, and He will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Here's a tip for making wise choices. Follow the HALT method. Here's how this works. Let's say you have a tempting choice in front of you. Before you do anything, take a moment and ask yourself if you're feeling hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Warning, if you're feeling any of these things, halt your decision-making and address those needs first. For example, halt and make a healthy snack. Halt, breathe, and count to 10. Halt and call a friend. Halt and take a quick nap. It only takes a moment to make a bad choice out of confused needs. Instead, halt, check in, and recharge before you move forward. Like it says in Proverbs 14, 16, the wise are cautious and avoid danger. Fools plunge ahead with reckless confidence. So when you pray, tell God you want to do anything to avoid danger. Ask him to lead you away from temptation. Ask him to help you halt before you rush into something you might regret. There's a sandwich for you. Why are there three? Well, because this sandwich is my kind of chaos. Oh, no. Okay. One, <laughs> two, three. Mmm. Oh, it's so crunchy. I'm trying to concentrate on the ingredients that I'm okay with. Oh, there's the tuna. I know, oh. there's a lot of tuna. The tuna there's hit so me as soon as it hit you. Mostly tuna. Mmm. Surprisingly, I'm not getting like much of the flavor from the Fruit Loops, but all yeah. the crunch. Not getting a lot of the pepperoni. Pepperoni? I don't like any of this. You want to spend more time with this sandwich or less time with this sandwich? Less time. Yeah. It's hard making a sandwich under a pressure situation. It's hard to do anything under a pressure situation. Self-control is important. You can ask the Holy Spirit for help. Yeah, instead of rushing in, you can always halt. And you can ask God for wisdom. He loves to give it to you. Until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride! Get more? Ooh. Do you feel like you're always rushing into your decisions? Or do you feel like you struggle with self-control or are just in need of wisdom? Well, if you are, the good news is all we have to do is ask God for it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are not alone in this world, but we have your Holy Spirit. And we ask that we can be people who have self-control, people who have wisdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So let's go out there this week and let's ask the Lord for wisdom and let's have some self-control starting today. <laughs>